Their cruise lasted all day long, but the sight of their old bus, now dubbed the Coffin, was a reminder that good things don't last forever, not even in a tropical paradise. before we get to the hotel. We've got to get on. OK? Next day, a herb garden and rejuvenation centre where they're working on ideas to restore lost youth. Yes. Remedies for, for snake bite. A more than generous host wanted them to see everything, from the plants they use to the factory and its steaming cauldrons. It took hours, and nobody got any younger. The uh, herbs are also crushed and processed into oils which were used in massages. You can go and stand here, is it? Go around the back. I don't warn, dear. <laughs> Mr. Samus gravely needed a massage and, uh, of course, being the eldest, had one. Well, it wasn't a very pretty sight, of course. I've only got time for one. I hadn't realised you were going to come in here for one. I hadn't realised the ladies were coming in. Was a... <laughs> do you think it'll catch on? I think it might well do. Then we went for a meal in uh, the same place, a sort of vegetarian meal on banana leaves, uh, very hot and um, very different, of course. I don't think we should have eating lessons. Why? Well, to know how to eat this stuff, because they eat differently. Carrot cake. The smell of it just gives me it, the, gives, gives me the willies, certainly. Any of it? Any, any, any near enough. Oh, I quite honestly didn't enjoy the herb garden. I couldn't stand the smell. And it was hot and it was stuffy. But you don't like the smell of herbs? No. <laughs> and we were subjected to it for a couple of hours. Is that the way you saw it, that you were subjected to it? Well, I felt that way yesterday. Perhaps the other day, looking back on it, perhaps it wasn't that bad. But I didn't enjoy the smell. And how are you making out with the food? The food's all right most of the time. We had an unusual breakfast today. Indian breakfast, which was unusual to say the least. What was there in that? I don't know. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. I think some of it was heated coconut, or, but it was mainly seemed like. Well, I'd never seen it before. Put it that way. And how did it go down at the start of the day? Um, I prefer it in the evenings to in the mornings, but I quite enjoyed it for a change. When one of India's veteran steam giants comes to town, Almost everything comes to a stop. But in India, there's always time to stand and stare.
another hurdle overcome. But in this land, you never know what you might meet round the corner. Their journey took the schoolboys through towns choked with traffic and over inland waterways deserted and unspoiled. It was the halfway stage of their four weeks expedition and they were heading for the southernmost tip of India on their cricketing mystery tour. So far when we've turned up to games in the morning we haven't really known who we we're about to play and they put together a scratch team against us and uh, then they appear one at a time wearing different clothes and we gradually sort of meet them. Sometimes we have a, a little chat at tea or at lunch but more often than not we hardly intermix with them at all not having enough time. Straight after the match we leave the hotel and that's the end of another day and we don't have a chance to mix at all really with the other Indian boys. We've just finished two, two trips of 11 hours in the bus during the day, uh, which means getting up early, which doesn't please anybody on the tour. Um, it is hard work moving from place to place in the south. From now on, it's really cricket orientated, whereas the first two weeks was getting used to the country and seeing some of the country. Um, I think cricket now takes over as, as the main reason for um, India. Uh, what about the opposition that you've met? Have you talked to any of the blokes very much? It's, there's been quite a contrast, actually. Um, in Bangalore, we played the stateside, and they were very, very friendly, wished us luck before we went into bat, which you would never get in England, um, and generally very, very interesting. But uh, in some places, it has been a bit annoying. Perhaps they're over-excitement. They tend to appeal three or four times and over, even if you don't get anywhere near the ball. What's happening here? Um, that is what's happening here. In fact, we've had three or four appeals before the balls even reach the batsman which doesn't always go down very well with a batsman. And what's this about them being interested in your gear? Yes, they keep offering to buy our kits, which is, uh, we could probably make quite a killing because they can't import the gear from England through import restrictions over here. So they're very keen indeed. They'll buy anything, socks, sweatbands, anything. And are you flogging this stuff then? Uh, nobody is yet. So at the end of the tour, I should think somebody might be tempted to get rid of a pair of gloves or something. Um, no one's yet um, selling any of the stuff. I don't think they really will. Martin, as, as captain of uh, Hurst Pier Point, um, oh, oh, big appeal, but no wickets. That's all right. What is going to be your lasting memory of, of being here on this tour? Probably the number of people. <laughs> you can't go anywhere without being followed by by 50 or 20 people, 50 or or 100 people. Um, it's really quite astounding. You go to the beach. And within 10 minutes, you've got the whole village literally just, just staring at you lying on the beach. I can't believe they haven't seen white people before. Um, just pure interest, I suppose, especially the children. Kovalam Beach. It stretches out of sight. What a fabulous place to spend Christmas. They're 5,000 miles from school and England's worst winter for years, but the distance makes no difference. To some, Christmas Day is Christmas Day, even out here. I'll never be able to get this done, I'll tell you that, Rob. Go straight, sir. Yeah, yeah. Try this. That's from Ian. Ooh. Is that all you got, you? Yeah. And this is from my, my, my mother and father. And you brought it with you to open out here? Yes. Why? Because I always like my Christmas presents on Christmas Day. It's a funny place to have Christmas, though. Yes, doesn't matter, though. It's still Christmas Day. You're halfway through the tour now. Is there anything you would have done differently if you'd been organising it? Less bus trips, I think. Yeah. yeah. But that obviously has its pros and cons, because uh, by going by bus, at least you see a lot of India. Don't you? And so, possibly, um, maybe it's worth it, although it's quite a grind. 
You can't see out of the bus terribly well, and uh, some of them are calling it uh, the coffin. Is that right? Yeah, well, you have the type of metal seat, so it gets rid of your kneecaps straight away. <laughs> um, and the plastic seats, of course, you sweat in like nothing on earth. So it is a bit of a coffin in many ways. But um, you can get the general idea of Indian hats changing, going down further south. What, what about the food? How, how, how are you shaping up with it? Well, I virtually eat anything, so it doesn't really matter. To me. <laughs> um, it shows. Yeah, it shows. Um, the curry. I, I, you know, some of it was really hot when we had our you know, Indian breakfast. You know, some of it was so hot it was unbelievable. But most of it you can cope with. There's no hassles. There are a few people who are a bit hypochondriac and everything, and they <laughs> they don't exactly like the curry. But apart, I think it's been fine. Yeah. How lucky do you feel coming out on a tour like this? Well, exceptionally lucky, really. Like almost like king, because I mean nobody else. Like, it's the only second time school's ever come out here. And, uh, second time any school. Any ever time. Come and out we here. were the first school as well. So, uh, you know, it's unbelievable, really. Um, I think the great heroes of this uh, tour are the boys. And to me, each one of them is a hero. And I think they are uh, great boys. Uh, I think that all our boys who come across them have a tremendous high regard for them. And uh, I think the great ambassadors of British youth and are doing a splendid job as well as enjoying themselves. And uh, we are enjoying having them. All of us are really lucky to have the chance to come out here and spend a month doing something different away from Christmas, seeing how other people, other religions celebrate Christmas. Um, we really have, we've all had a great time out here. And if those fears